couple really important things happened to me when I was in third grade that sort of kept me focused on wanting to be a children's book illustrator because I really, really did want to be a children's book illustrator from the time I was pretty young. And um, two books actually did it for me, one being Where the Wild Things Are, where Max's room turns into a forest. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when I first encountered that book, I was already a reader of words, but the, it was the picture story of those magical page turns that just floored me. I remember thinking, um, you know, that it was just as awe-inspiring as anything visual that I had ever seen. Like, I loved it, in, you know, in The Wizard of Oz when Munchkin, Munchkin Land was in full color all of a sudden after being in Kansas. I loved going to Disneyland and just being wowed by, um, you know, that experience. And this was equal in measure to me. It was just like, how did he do this? How did he change a bedroom into a forest with these simple page turns? And so it was that. It was also Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey, which um, that story, the, the, the end papers with Sal and her mom canning blueberries in that kitchen that made it seem like I was right there with them. Sal, little Sal with her like overall strap off her shoulder and her messy hair and her little sandals that I coveted, wished I had a <laughs> pair. I wanted to, I didn't want to just, you know, be in the book with little Sal. I actually wanted to be her. And so I um, tried really hard to act like her, look like her, you know, beg my mother to get me those sandals, which she never <laughs> did. <laughs> so, and I also was aware, and I don't know how, I articulated it in my head, but I was aware that McCloskey chose that blue ink in that book as a um, as a narrative choice. Like I don't think I formed those <laughs> that sentence in my head, but I could tell it was it was because the theme was blueberries. It was because somebody made a choice. You know, it was a decision, a creative decision, and it just meant something to me. I felt like, oh, I got, I get it, I get it, and that's really wonderful. And so I went into third grade loving these two books and wanting to be a children's book illustrator. And my best friend Lisa was in second grade at the time, and she was um, the boss of me, <laughs> as Clementine <laughs> says about Margaret. Um, she was the boss of me, and she said, you know, if you want to be a children's book illustrator, then I'm going to write a story and you're going to illustrate it, because that's how it's done. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. So she wrote um, a story called The Friendship Circle, and she said, okay, now illustrate it. So I drew pictures, and, and then when we were finished with this story, I mean, we, we showed it to our teachers. So her second grade teacher, my third grade teacher, thought it was kind of good enough to send to the California State Fair, so they sent it off. And then we forgot about it, and maybe about a month or two later, we heard that it had won an award, and our school asked us if we would um, do it again. Can you do another copy of the book? Now, <laughs> it's like, okay, so Lisa tried to write the story again, and I drew the pictures again as much as I could remember, and we fastened it together with brass brads, and then it was in our school library. So when I would go in for library time, this, this book was on the shelf in the library, and I felt as if I had become a children's book illustrator. I mean, it was like, okay, my book is here, and this is where all these books are, and great, you know, I'm in. <laughs> so that it was, is really easy. It is, it's yeah. so easy. It only took like 35 years after that to, okay, but, um, <laughs> So that was the one thing that happened in third grade that was major. And then the other thing is, I remember we were painting at easels, and we were supposed to be um, painting, I think, I was painting a portrait of somebody. I don't remember. I just remember it was a face. And accidentally, instead of going for the flesh color paint, I hit the brush with blue. And when I painted, it was, to me, a mistake. I was like, oh, oh my god, what did I just do? And I was sort of horrified, but right at that moment, my third grade teacher came up and she, she actually said, wow, you know, something, she, she responded, and then she went out of the room to get somebody to bring them in to show them what I had done. And, I, and I'm standing there hearing them talk about how I chose this cool shadow color <laughs> under the chin. <laughs> And like, can you believe that she did that? Now, I was already sort of the class artist, so this was, 
and I knew enough to shut up. <laughs> Let, take the yeah, take the credit. I'm like, hmm, really? I did that. Okay, so those are my two third grade um, launching off to become, you know, I, I decided, uh, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a children's book illustrator. Um, so th one of the things that I think is really amazing about being a children's book illustrator is that um, kids have to struggle to learn how to read words often. It doesn't come naturally. Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes it takes a lot of work, as you guys know. And, but like, they don't have to struggle to read pictures. That is just something they know how to do. And it's effortless. They can tell all kinds of stories by looking at pictures. If the illustrator didn't tell the story that the illustrator is intending to tell, kids will go off on a tangent of their own story making. Um, if, it's, if they go off somewhere where you as an illustrator don't want them to go, it's because your illustration story isn't good enough, not because they're not reading it well. And that's a humbling experience for, an, for me as an illustrator because I know that they're going to look at it really intensely. They're going to find stories in it that um, maybe I didn't intend for them to find. And if they do, that's my fault. Like I really, I, they're going to find every mistake and, you know, in every single book, no matter how hard I try, there's something that some child somewhere along the line will, will point out to me as, you know. There was this, I did this uh, picture book about um, Santa Claus, and there's this, this one little image of a little girl spinning a baton. And this, I was at a book signing, and this little boy came up, and he said, you made a mistake in the Santa book. I'm like, really? Where? And so he points to this picture. I'm like, well, what? What did I do? And he said, well, if you turn the baton, this way, then the tassels would be, you know, you drew them with the wind velocity. I don't remember, it went, they were the wrong way. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. Like, whoa, oh. <laughs> Shh, let's not tell anybody. I mean, and I just, I love that because like they are looking at it so, so carefully. I kind of had put the word out to as many people as I could that I was interested in in illustrating something like this. And then um, Sarah's agent is also my agent. And so he forwarded your first draft of, uh, a, a draft of Clementine to me and said, what, what do you think? And, and I was just blown away by your voice and Clementine as a character. And I think it was about a 25 page document you when I read it. 14 or 15. Right, so it didn't, it wasn't like a full novel, but it was, it was, um, it was just so clearly something, it was exactly what I was hoping for. I have tried with Clementine to, um, to pull out the emotional moments. I mean, I think it's, it's easier, I think, to pull out the objects. Okay, they're talking about, um, oh, I don't know, building a, a, a bin in the basement that's, you know, and so if you pull out that, that image and not show all the emotions surrounding that particular scene, that's sort of easier as an illustrator. But I've tried when I read those wonderful manuscripts of yours to, to figure out where I could um, kind of deepen the emotional content, really get to, to the heart of what these people are feeling and thinking as much as I possibly can. So that's been a wonderful challenge. It was actually kind of hard to, to get the, the, pub the designers on board at the publishing house with the first book because the inclination was to do something much more in their mind um, current. And I kept saying, no, I kind of, I really want these, like the illustrations to be small within like a lot of white space. And, and so we finally did um, this. I brought this because this is one of the pages that, w that did not work for me. It didn't look like, like these old books. And so, it was partly the type was too large, the letting, which is the space between the lines, was not open enough. Um, this was a little too soft. I wanted a like crisp type font. I mean, the, all this stuff was was really important to me, and I think um, is perhaps one of the reasons that when people have read these books and experienced them, they've at least adults have felt like, oh, I remember books like this. 